Hey there, it's Tom Stern on behalf of Indie Structure Productions once again, and we are getting ready to work on the first steps of the great guitar build off build. In recap, this is something that I customized 10 years ago, and we are going to be making a new fully hand built version of this with new details and just in general, kind of showing off what I can do nowadays in comparison to back then when I had no clue. Um, so this is a Weststone WLP DLK, I believe, something like that. It's, it's basically just a Les Paul type copy. Um, hopefully Gibson doesn't sue me if I make it too much like Gibson, which it probably won't. There is quite a few details about this that make it very different and there's gonna be quite a few more um, once we actually get into building this and designing this. So that being said, let us crack on and um, see what we can come up with. First things first, I think we should probably, you know, draw this out. Now there's a couple of things already about this that I really want to kind of like take a look at from the design point of view. Um, I do want it to be fairly similar, but there's gonna be definitely some things that are gonna change. This guitar has a body of something. It is very hard for me to distinguish what wood this is as it is massively relict, but maple neck, rosewood fretboard, and I don't know, some light colored wood. Um, could even be maple, but I doubt it. I need to look at the old footage to kind of see what that would be. Plastic nut, plastic binding, and then uh, hardware that I have stripped down to copper. Now, what I am gonna change about this is quite a bit. It's gonna have an ebony board. It is going to have a flame birch cap and back bound, um, probably headstock plate out of the same birch. Three piece maple neck, just because that way I get a little bit more stability out of it. I'm going to have a wall ute instead of just a scarf joint as this has. And for the pickup, I am thinking bare knuckle poly mats. A uh, little bit of an age thing. I believe, I think we might do a relic type finish as this is massively relic, as I said, and it would suit it to actually have that sort of same finish. I'm not gonna do the same inlays because, well, I don't like them, <laughs> but I am thinking that maybe block inlays would suit the new version of this guitar quite a lot better. I did manage to grab the last remaining Schaller hardware that I could find still in the vintage copper. There wasn't a lot of choice. I only got the tuners and the TOM bridge. So that means that instead of having a stop tail as this has, we are going to make it string through. Probably push pulls for both pickups. I'm not sure whether I want a four button com configuration or whether I just want to have one master volume, one tone. That's a little bit more up my alley in, in general. So I might do that. But of course, having the push pulls on both pickups means that the middle position will definitely be interesting. Or I could just put two mini toggle switches. We'll find out. I haven't really decided on that yet. Mm, gonna have a barrel jack. Going to have a Corian nut, more than likely. Definitely gonna do the carving, because that is probably the key feature of this instrument, is the chip carving. So that is something that I'm definitely going to do. Um, not gonna have pickup rings, I don't think. I am gonna mount them direct to the body just because that is my preference of working in general. Right, let's have a closer look and start drawing this out. Something else that is definitely gonna change is the headstock shape. Um, this was the first initial headstock that I did back in the day and it is, yeah, it's not, not the greatest. There's the old IP logo, the mushroom cloud. Gonna change that as well. Signature somewhere. Oh yeah, this is really funny. So, look at this. It has completely deformed. I used, this is a 24 and a half, uh, 24.75 inch scale length and I put baritone strings on it, tuned it to, well, a baritone tuning with really, really heavy gauge strings and it bent the tailpiece out of whack. All right, now we've skipped ahead about a week. Hi there, you can see my shirt has changed. Um, yeah, 
I <laughs> I have now struggled through <laughs> the plague. Um, I did catch COVID and <sighs> have now, you know, got through that, got past that, and now we're back at the drawing table, literally. So um, let us get down to where we were left off. And essentially the very first thing that we want to do is figure out the center line. I've already marked out the one end here. And then there is the other end here that I also need to mark out. Right. Now, I don't need to get all these that manage is exact, but I do want to get pretty close. So let's say knot line is there, end of the headstock is here. We're gonna draw the body real quick. That's there, and yeah, let's trace out the body here. Now it remains to be seen how close I'll stick to the original shape. Like I said earlier, it's not like I want to get sued by Gibson for following a Les Paul shape, even though this is not quite the right shape for that. Um, I'm using a half cut pencil, usually something that I would reserve for just getting the radius on a knot, but, and marking my knot slot depth, but works very well in tracing out something like this as well, because I can lean it up against the edge of the body. This does have quite a lot skinnier of a horn, lower horn than the uh, Gibson does, which I kind of like. And then that's just gonna be a straight line. All right, cool. Let's see what we're left with and draw the center line. From there. Oh. see if that looks, that does look right. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna reinforce that line. A really good set of rulers and measuring devices goes a hell of a long way in building guitars. Um, now there's a couple of features on this that I do want to kind of preserve. Overall, I really do like the shape. It's got really nice round shape to it. The lower horn is fairly small, but it is that way on the original. So I'm thinking of whether I should just keep that. Um, this will be a straight line. Let's make sure that it is a straight line. Use my protractor for this. Turn that corner a bit. Hmm. Right, so now this is the part where things are getting a bit more difficult. I might bring the waist down ever so slightly, not by much. Maybe like this. I do need to take that into account on the other side. So right here, looking at nine point. Four. Aha, uh -huh. all right. So it's not exactly centered. Three, two, four. Yeah, three, two, four. So one, six, two would be here. So, okay. I wasn't massively off on my center line. It's just askew by a little bit. So, yeah, I'm going to fix that. I just thinned out the waist a little bit, opened up the curves on both of the top here. But in general, um, I've really grown fond of the shape of my weird, weird LP knockoff that I think I'm just gonna stick with it. Um, guitar that they don't even make anymore, I don't believe so. That is now my the back of my nut. And 
gonna have the Gibson scale length of 24 and three quarters. <coughs> there. 24.75. Just mark that out as the scale length. I'm gonna do that very lightly. There. Now, because it is a two pneumatic bridge, I am going to put it so that it's gonna be one mil or half a mil back on the treble and three mil back on the uh, base side. <coughs> Sorry, the COVID had still kind of left a sort of impression on me that uh, my words are coming out still kind of a little bit confused, but if you don't mind me grasping at straws. So 75 mil is the, from hole to hole, or middle to hole to middle to hole. What did I say, 75? It's also why I'm using a calculator more than I might usually. Uh, so 37 and a half. There and there. It is not the biggest adjustment in the world, but enough to help with intonation that little bit more. Give a little bit more room for the saddles to move. I can plan out where I want my string through ferrules to go. Probably don't want them to be too far back. The stop tail is 40 mil away, so I guess I could put these 40 mil. I'll see if I put them in this arrangement or another later on, but I kind of like the sense of symmetry I have here. Now, I have my two most important measurements, which is my scale length and my nut line. But we're also gonna need the last fret. So the 22nd fret, uh, which is from the nut, 22nd, that's 452.243, or five, five, so that's the last fret and let's see 462 would be the 23rd so I'm gonna leave that as the fretboard edge or end of the fretboard I should say great that looks about right the end of the fretboard is going to be 56 millimeters and now that I have the end of the fretboard and I have the nut I can join the two ends here so from there to there I'm gonna go a little bit over on the nut end to leave room for the headstock planning the headstock is gonna be different to the original. I mean, that much I stated already before, but just kind of reinstating that because, well, the original wasn't that great, or the original that I made. It's not really that great. All right, we're getting somewhere. Awesome. So now we have those two. We can figure out our, um, <clears throat> pickup positions. Usually, I like to put the bridge pickup about the back wall of it, or back end of it, is 11 mil away from the bridge. That's usually where I like to put it, but let's see what it is for this one. And it is a bit different. So 15. We're gonna keep true to the, what the original 
that. So, 15 mil away. And then how far, well, the neck pickup is pretty much attached to the neck pocket. So, let's get this in place there and I am gonna do direct mount pickups as compared to the pickup surrounds that the original had just because I'm not the biggest fan of pickup surrounds but also because I'm gonna be putting in the bare knuckle poly mats in this which have a black base plate and I think those are gonna look just absolutely stunning on this guitar. There. <clears throat> Great, so that is pickups in place, bridge in place, nut in place. Actually let's let's go draw the nut and the headstock. Let's see what we come up with for the headstock. This would be the Daedalus headstock normally, which would be my usual three aside headstock. Um, but I'm not quite sure it would fit this build, and I'm not sure that it would quite fit the tuners that I have. And that's fine. That's already getting a bit cramped, but... Oh, they would fit. It's a bit cramped though. Just ever so slightly cramped. Well, I'll, I'll draw it on, and then we'll start adjusting it. And it's not a very Les Paul E thing, but let's see if I mirror some of it. And we go from there. Now I could widen that out. Granted this is a angled back headstock so it doesn't need to be that long because this is this template is for a scooped headstock so there's a bit more extra room here for the scoop. Um, because I'm not doing that I could just bring it back about there. I think that's what I'm gonna do before we get too far into it because this looks weird. <laughs> so after all that I accidentally seem to have drawn a uh, pretty much a Taylor um, headstock because I mean look at this what I did was I used my template and I used the short side of it to draw here and then I wanted to extend it a little bit, so I just followed that curve. Or first, I drew it like this, but I wanted to make it wider, so I turned, turned the template so that I kept the point here consistent. Drew it, drew it a bit longer. Then I rounded the corner here. I flipped it, and I did the same thing on the other side. So followed it, turned the corner, and then I, what part was that? Oh, right, yeah. Then I took that corner and I drew this part, flipped, uh, and again, this which left me with a gap here, and I'll just bridge that with that. And it it's pretty close to, to a tailor. I started looking at it, I was like, that looks somewhat familiar. I just don't recognize from where. A little bit different, but... Um, yeah. I don't do a lot of three-a-side headstocks, I gotta admit. So, whether or not I keep this shape is another thing. 
it is quite a deviation from that one. I don't even remember what the original headstock for that looked like, but it was it was like wide and really, really wide, really bulky. Not something I really enjoyed. There's always the option that I could just do that. Yeah, headstock drawing is always a bit of a struggle, but we'll get there. I want to see if I can get this even remotely close to having straight string pull. Because I don't really like headstocks that kind of fan out the strings. All right. well, well, that missed the mark quite a bit. All right, um, well, really no way of avoiding it here. I am gonna have strings like so. Let's have a look at how far apart, how far apart the tuners are on the original. They're 40 mil apart. All right, my template I believe they're 30 mil apart. So 40 mil apart, let's say that that is the first one. There. <clears throat> All right, I am gonna draw out some of the details and then we'll go over all of the drawings once I'm done. So, time to have a look over the plan a little bit. So, um, I did end up adjusting the headstock, so now it thins out, and I can get those tuners going a bit nicer according to the um, straight string pull. The straight string, string pull. I am thinking that I might um, do away with the block like heel and instead just bring that around because it is going to be a set neck it's not going to have a plate anymore so that would be nice um did the carving drawings like roughly to give an idea pretty similar to what the original drawings look like you know 10 years back very like geiger-esque biomechy type stuff. We'll see how that translates through this time around. Um, decided, control-wise, that I'm gonna have two mini toggle switches for uh, coil splitting both the neck and the bridge separately, and then just a tone and a volume, perhaps with a treble bleed. We'll see. Um, there's the neck, side profile, not much else to it. This entire thing is gonna have faux binding on the body, the back. I'm going to have binding on the fretboard as it is on here. But instead of using plastic, I'm gonna use birch. So speaking of materials, let us, oh yeah, and I haven't drawn the frets of the inlays because, well, block inlays um, didn't feel feel like drawing them right now. But yeah, let's have a look at materials. So, for this version of this guitar, it's going to have a birch, a flame birch top and a back and an ebony board. Got the ebony board already from my stock and I'm going to be using this one. I think it looks pretty cool. But let us figure out what birch I'm gonna use, because I have a quite a bit of it 
already book matched. I was going to use some flame birch that I had bought ages ago, but seeing as this guitar, the original guitar came along from me working with tools that my grandfather had given me and me working with tools that my grandfather has left me now. Um, and with this, this guitar is not gonna be any dissimilar to that. I'm gonna be using quite a lot of tools that my grandfather has left me. And this birch that I have right now um, that you might, that frequent viewers might see and recognize these are from the how to make book match tops um, video and these planks were something that were just lying around um, at my grandparents old place so I thought it would be appropriate to use these instead of the ones that I had bought from a lumber yard really like that figuring over there quite a bit that looks pretty cool I think that would make for a pretty funky back of the guitar. Besides the um, hardwood here, it kind of it works pretty well because this, the back, the back of the original guitar is made up of three pieces, at least three pieces. But there's a very distinct line, so I think that kind of nicely mirrors that shape. So. I'm gonna keep this one for the back. But what are we gonna take for the front? This is pretty ridiculous. Point two. What is this? This is 16.4. So yeah, it's scraping by, but it's enough. These are the two pieces that I'm gonna go with. Although this thins out quite a bit, seeing as there's quite a bit to take off there, this thins out a lot, so that's a no. Oh, it's not wide enough. I think all these boards, as nice of a idea as it was to use these, I think they're not wide enough for this. No, oh, that's, a, that's a bummer. All right, well, at least the back is for sure gonna be that. I will need to go back to the original plan of using the pre-purchased lumber. So let me just grab that. I think I'm gonna go for that one. And then the Friday part. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so now with the plants drawn and woods chosen, it really is time to go make some sawdust. But that will be in the next episode when we pick up on, well, this. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching this episode of the Great Guitar Build Off slash Anniversary Build for IP Guitars. I hope you have enjoyed. Enjoyed. That is a very <laughs> weird word. If you have, be sure to click that like, hit the bell, because that is one of the things that helps this channel so, so very much with the new algorithms and everything else that YouTube has been doing. I say new, but this is something that YouTube has been doing for a very long time. I'm going off tangent. Comment down below and uh, yeah, subscribe to see more because we're just about getting geared up and ready to go. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun from here on out. I know this might've been a bit long-winded, me planning things out, but such happens when you get struck with COVID halfway through one episode. <laughs> Anywho, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.